The lizard's eyes are dark as polished coal, void of all light. A faint frost seems to cover the cracked and broken scales around his mouth. You have a reputation for both malfeasance and chaos. Imagine my surprise when it took you so long to find your way here. I see the miasma surrounding our islet certainly did not hinder you. Well, here you stand, in the flesh, so to speak. And a finer collection of corpusculae I never have seen. I trust you are not opposed to a mutually beneficial accord between civil and gentle persons. Likewise, I am sure. But I am not here to bandy niceties. Our situation is somewhat less than ideal. I am here at the behest of my master to offer you a simple exchange. An offer of aid for the promise of aid. The epitome of civil reciprocity. You and he possess a common foe. The power behind the Void Woken has made our lives hell, so to speak. Since the Divine Order unleashed Death Fog against the Black Ring and those darling woodland creatures. And as the gods have shirked their duty, perhaps we could come to a mutually beneficial arrangement pertaining to both of our objectives. Indeed, I can offer you the source channel that you seek forthwith as a gesture of good faith. Ah, <sighs> indeed, the creatures that strut about this realm so often do. Very well. I can see them straining against your fangs. Unleash them, Godwoken. Ask your questions. Because it is expeditious to do so, my master would have this isle cleared as quickly as possible. The lizard looks about to make sure no one else can hear, leans in and whispers conspiratorially. And, if you are to become the new divine, I would much rather be an ally than a foe. After all, the power you wield will be as a great sword to my master's butter knife. There are legions that would follow you, myself included. Your power would be unfathomable. Assuming, of course, you take it for your own. My master has been troubled by the presence of the void as it creeps ever forward encroaching on areas in which he himself once ruled supreme. None more so than this island. There is a tree at this island's core which has special significance to my master. Think of it as hallowed, sacrosanct ground. But the Black Ring maggots writhe all about its trunk. And you will exterminate these termites. It is simplicity itself, in truth. Why, the only thing you truly desire, or certainly the only thing you truly need, I will reveal unto you the location of the Council of Seven. My master has dealt with many of your ilk, small-minded creatures with a hunger for power, out to save themselves, or loved ones, or the world, some fantasy or another. But all are willing to strike a covenant if it means their success. One was even willing to give up the location of this council to earn my master's boon. How felicitous that you merely have to spill a little blood to earn the same. My master's identity is of no practical consequence in this matter. You need concern yourself with nothing barring the truth that my master always honors his vows. Your smoldering half-demon pet can attest to that. I. She is the one that comes to me, helm in hand, in a sad attempt to beg and snivel her way out of previous and quite binding contracts. Alas, I am not at liberty to say more. 
My master values privacy above all else. He would not take it kindly if he discovered I had been indiscreet. One may ask, one may inquire, but one should be eternally wary of what one demands. And one should heed that twicefold for information like this. There is power in names, power far, far in excess of your mortal limits. I'll not deliver that power unto him. A sagacious decision. How fares the hunt, my friend? He smiles, like one would at a child, asking about the birds and the bees. I know, because I've known others like you. Those whose fates are chained, for better or for worse, to that of the gods themselves. I have battled the foe of foes, and conquered it for a while. I have sat in perfumed gardens with the source herself, drank life from her very lips. I have seen well over two thousand springs, and will continue to do so until time itself closes its weary eyes. Trust me, I know what you are, and what you can be. Death fog obscures any approach, and hangs thick over the collapsed bridge that led to the isle from the Driftwood Road. There is more than the mist alone there, though. Magic that evades my eyes. I also spotted a sloop further down the shoreline, but of course, a quiet afternoon's boating trip will be quite ruined once one hits death fog shrouded waters. It is a place of irony, if you will. Once the site of an academy dedicated to the art of demon hunting, now the remnant of a dream sliced open into nightmare. Rumor has it an exorcism went wrong there long ago, and for a short time a great demon stood unopposed, 
Had it not been for Dr. Deva, the entirety of Reaper's Coast could have looked like Blood Moon Island looks today. He contained the demon and its blood spawn to the doomed shores of the isle, surrounded it with death fog, and never looked back. I met him once, during a soiree in Arcs. Quite the eccentric is Dr. Deva. But then again... He looks you up and down. Aren't we all? His dark eyes grow darker still. All you had to do is say no, remember? Here you stand, a child of the Seven, and yet you chose to deal with a demon. There is no word for such stupidity. But I will teach you a lesson yet. How fares the hunt? Death fog. There is. I also. It is a place. Room. He contained. I met him. He looks you. Aren't we all? He smiled. I. 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 Trust me. I know what you are. May you wander in wisdom. How fares the hunt, my friend? May you want...
How fares the hunt, my friend? May you want... How fares the hunt, my friend? May you want... You have returned, but not with the spectre of death. What would you know before you return to your bloody business?
She pointedly ignores you.
The spirit floats in front of you, his eyes unfocused and darting from side to side. Looking down at his mangled corpse at your feet, you see that the front is relatively unmarked, but his back has been eviscerated. Long, jagged cuts run the length of his torso. The spirit's eyes move in your direction, trying to focus, but he seems to look right through you. A voice. Oh, I can still hear it in the dark. I can hear it whispering. He won't stop. <laughs> His voice was everywhere. It danced with the screams. Insects with a dwarf's tongue. They came from above. They laughed as they cut us down. The spirit doubles up, raking his hands across his face, ghostly nails cutting deep into spectral skin. No, oh, I can hear it. Not the echoes. I can hear it. The voice. It. It's here. The spirit shudders and cries, tears running down his cheeks. Oh, divine Lucian, protect me. You seven ancient gods, please. Don't let it get me. The spirit's eyes dart left and right. It reaches tentatively a hand out for a moment, but thinks better of it and turns away. The bull flips its ghostly tail at a non-existent fly. It registers your presence. Well, guess I should have seen that coming. Uh, yep, sure do. Or oh, did, leastways. All bulls can see the future. I'm surprised you don't know that. You sure you want to know? All right, let me have a look see here. The bull shakes itself, swallows the card, clears its throat. World's gonna end. Uh, let me think about that now, too. Yeah. Mm, uh, okay. Right. Here we go. Sue. Me. The bull shrugs. Yeah. I don't suppose you could do me a favor. On its this here harness, so as I can make my way to the field of echoes. History or remember 
The ball nods its thanks and gently fades away. I knew you'd say yes. My victors, do not doubt. Our divine order will prevail. I'll, I'll show you. Boys. The spirits of a magister and a dwarf are locked in ethereal combat. Their vicious blows make no impact, yet they struggle on. Mid-snarl, the dwarf spies your presence and staggers back to address you. Sorcerer, you must hate the Reds as much as I do, eh? Rightly so. Reds had sorcerers locked up tight in that caravan. And you know where they were sending them. You look like you've been there yourself. The Magister lunges for the Dwarf, his exasperation clear. Anna, you saw it with your own eyes. You know Sorcerer's Law, Voidwoken, and you know we'd all still be alive if you hadn't attacked our caravan. The Dwarf flashes a malevolent smirk at the Magister. Or you'll be needed no more here to the halls to tell eternal tales with my ancestors. Gazing towards some far-off sight you cannot see, the spirit of the dwarf glimmers, fades into nothingness, and is gone. Fool! You should be locked up in the joy with all those like you! The Magister's shoulders collapse with relief. His burden lifted, his spirit slowly fades to nothingness before your eyes. Doubled over in agony, the shivering Magister spirit mumbles to himself, tightly clutching three golden stalks in one fist. Noting the attention, he straightens, revealing insignia spelling Kinnit, and a jagged wound spilling his innards upon the ground. He reaches a ghostly hand into your chest and squeezes your heart. You become Kinnit, his memories flooding over you and replacing your own. Warmth. Comfort. You are Kinnit, playing cards with your mates in a cosy barracks. You stagger to tipsy attention as a white-clad magister commands that one of your troop seek a lost caravan. It's a one-man job, a job no man wants. Your sly-eyed troop leader holds out straws to you and the others. Who will investigate? You feel the short straw and hear them shout, Kinnit! You know what that means. A lonely traipse in the cold dark. You dawdle and grumble all the way, sobering as you find the overturned caravan. Massacre. Your lantern reveals ravaged corpses in every direction. Inhaling sharply, you smell a thick black stench you remember secondhand from the few void woken corpses your troops have found. No. Kinnit's tears fall from your eyes as you recognize his beloved weapon master, lifeless. A dark thicket rustles to your left. A claw rakes savage stripes across your guts. As Kinnit dies, all goes black. Staggering back from Kinnit's deathly grasp, only your own blood now pumps through your heart. With your living eyes, you see him trembling in front of you, desperately holding out three straws. As you pluck the short straw from his hands, Kinnit weeps with relief. His wound disappears in turn, and he's restored to the model image of a strapping young soldier. He looks around, then looks at you, and then he smiles. Smiling broadly, Kinnit fades away.
the little boy lobs a stone across the river. It makes a long arc before plunging into the water below. Oh! Ma! Are you all right? Ma! A screech like metal dragging on stone grinds from across the river. You have to help her, please. You can't see her. She's in the house, and those things are all around. Void things. We were on our way into town, like normal. There was a... a fight. Some dwarves attacked some magisters, and there were sorcerers too, and, and then the bugs came. Those void things. They... killed everyone. And my ma got on to chase her, and she went across the bridge, and then she raised the bridge, and... And, and she told me to run, and now she's stuck over there with them. Not without Ma. Family doesn't just leave each other. You... you, you will. Maybe... maybe you can cross the river then. Ma lifted the bridge, but there's got to be another way, right? There's got to be a way. We'll save Ma. I know we will. His gaze shoots to the ground. He grabs a small flat pebble and chucks it across the river. Again, it lands in the water below, well before reaching the other side of the cliffs. I'll keep distracting him. No way! Ma didn't leave me. I'm not leaving her. He performs a divine order salute. Now go out, Ma! junk.
Collared by magisters in the far north, you are forced marched to this foreign land. A moment of hope as a grinning dwarf removes your source collar. Seconds later, void woken death.
And who are you? Oh, never mind, no time. Hurry on in and gear up. There's a void woken right out the front door. Barin? He's still out there? Damn it, I told him to go back into town. We gotta do this fast. Let's get those bugs out of here. You in. She snorts and tosses a grenade from palm to palm with ease. I could turn an anthill into a crater from a quarter of a mile off. With both of us geared to the teeth, we'll make short work of these beasties. You ready or not? I'm retired divine order, you know. I ain't scared of a fight. If you step out that door, I'm coming after you. You'd be glad I do. You can hang your hat on that. I got all the fixings here for every kind of bomb, grenade, missile and shell you can imagine. Make what you want and then let go. I've got a boy to get back to.
Not much of a landlubber, but sometimes I get no choice. Got what you need. I'll bring up the rear. Let's get those beasties.
junk. A vast continent. Fast tight. <laughs> 